The Steelers aren't the only show in Pittsburgh this weekend. The field house is full for round two between the Panthers and the Hoyas. One week ago in Washington, D.C., Pittsburgh used its wide bodies to power past Georgetown by a point at the MCI Center. Coming up, the Hoyas will try to match that muscle in today's rematch. Using its own wide body, 6'8", 260-pound Mike Sweetney. Fasten your seatbelt, Big East basketball, Georgetown, Pittsburgh, next. Second Saturday in a row that the Hoyas and the Panthers have matched up. Pittsburgh 17 and 3. Georgetown is 12 and 6. 50th and final year here is Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. I'm John Sanders. Along with Ron Perry, the Panther run continues thanks in no small part to their rebounding. Doing a great job. They've out-rebounded 19 of 20 opponents so far this year and really out-rebounded. Dominated Syracuse by 25 boards in their big win this week. Also advantage against Georgetown. They're number two in the conference in rebound margin. And you would expect all of that to come from the biggest guys, the centers and the people there, but you've got to include Jerron Brown in that group as well. You really do. He plays much bigger than his six foot four inch frame, and he got a huge tip in basket a week ago in the victory. That was the winning basket against Georgetown. Leads the team in rebounding, had 10.7 boards in that game, also had 10 rebounds against Syracuse. He's tough inside. He plays a lot bigger than 6'4", and a guy that a lot of people think is a lot bigger than 260, Mike Sweetney doing everything for Georgetown. And he is a big man, and he plays like a big man. He leads the team in scoring. He leads the conference in field goal percentage and tied for the league lead in rebounds. He's having a dynamite year, and he's a guy Pitt's going to really have to try to contain in the paint today. Panthers trying to do something they've never done before, and that sweep a season series from Georgetown. Can they do it? We're about to find out. Big East basketball straight ahead. What makes the new 255 horsepower Nissan Maxima the envy of all luxury performance sedans? A top 10 engine, eight years running. Voted best in class. 50 safety features. Hey, if you were a luxury performance sedan, you'd be jealous too. And now, get low 3.9 APR for 60 months or 1,000 cash back on a new Maxima. Offers end January 31st. Nissan. Driven. Hungry? You've come to the right place. The home of great brands and great taste. ConAgra Foods. We set America's table. Still hungry? ConAgra has the foods America craves at mealtime, snack time, or any time. ConAgra Foods. We set America's table. What do you say to those who imagine the things the rest of us might never think of? The money isn't the first thing. The idea is the first thing. How was it that they always seem to make ends meet when you're sure that money was the last thing on their minds? It does relieve your mind. allows you to focus on your work. The most sensible investments I've made have been made by others. For 80 years, TIA CREP has managed money for people with other things to think about. Log on to see what we can do for you. Madison Square Garden is the big stage for college players and coaches. All the greats have to pass through this arena. The emotions are intense. The players feed off of it. The fans love every minute of it. And everyone wants to be there for the next great moment. It's almost March and trade time is just around the corner. It's nonstop hoops action at the Garden as Coach Jarvis and St. John's go head-to-head -head with the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Don't miss Big East basketball at the Garden. St. John's versus Notre Dame, February 27th. For great seats, call Ticketmaster or visit thegarden.com. Devils fans, watch Fox Sports Net for your chance to follow your team to Denver. Just log on to NewJerseyDevils.com to enter the Follow the Devils to Denver contest. Then watch the Devils on Fox Sports Net during select games to win. Cool prizes will be given during each telecast, including the grand prize, a trip to Denver, tickets to a Devils Avalanche game, and lunch with the Devils announcers. But you have to watch the Devils on Fox Sports Net to win the Follow the Devils to Denver contest. Enter today. Today's Big East basketball game being brought to you by Nissan, who introduces the totally new V6 Ultima, the cure for the common car. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. 
by ConAgra Foods, we set America's table. And by Hyundai, where driving is believing, come test drive the full lineup of exciting new cars at your local Hyundai dealer today. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on this Saturday afternoon for Big East Conference basketball, a year ago, Pittsburgh beat Georgetown in Washington, and the Hoyas returned the favor. We're in Fitzgerald Fieldhouse in its 50th and final season. Let's set the starting lineup for the Hoyas. They're 3-3 three three in conference play. Braswell, Bethel, Riley, Sweetney, and Wilson. Of course, Braswell, one of the all-time greats at the guard position for the Hoyas. Craig Escherick in his third season as the head coach, but he's had a quarter of a century at Georgetown. For Pittsburgh, the starting lineup looks like this. And the guy that's picked it up lately is Julius Page, because Brandon Knight bothered by a leg injury. Page back-to-back -back career highs his last two games. Head coach is Ben Howland. He was a defensive MVP when he was in college, and he has brought that defense to Pittsburgh big time. He really has, John. You see his record and the team playing very well this year. 17 up, three down, playing with a lot of confidence. John Cowell is our referee. Tom Lopes and Bob Adams are the umpires, and we're underway. Hoyas controlled the opening tip. It went right down to the final shot, the final seconds last week at the MCI Center. Third straight game, a sellout here. They get it inside to Wilson. The turnaround is off the glass and no good. Page has the rebound. Here come the Panthers. Nice boxing out by Pitt that time. Very evenly matched teams. Both teams playing man-to-man. -man. Got to take good care of the ball in this game. See who wins the battle of the boards. They won't give a lot of clean, open shots to each other this afternoon. Very interesting stretch here for Pittsburgh. They rebounded or came off that dramatic win at Georgetown by clobbering Syracuse here at home, and then right back come the Hoyas. So this is a tough test for the Panthers. Really evenly matched league, but to play each other back-to-backs like this in a week, not an easy thing. Nice up fake inside by Corey Morris. This is the Achilles heel, though, for this Panther basketball team. They are not good at the foul line. Nice up fake. Couple of the big boys going at it right there. Wilson, 6'11", committing the foul on Torrey Morris. It goes 6'10", 282, when he's got the headband to boot. And he'll get some help from Siobhan Trotman off the bench. And Ontario left. It's an interesting rotation that Ben Howland can run out there. If they get in any kind of foul trouble, we'll see whether they stick with the man-to-man -man defense or they mix in a zone as they did last Saturday. They got in foul trouble in that game, and Lett came in. He picked up quick fouls, and Siobhan Troutman played very well in the middle. Ben Howland hoping he can get some productive minutes as he did against Syracuse from Morris in this game. I think we had a lane violation on that one by Georgetown. That'll give Morris one more crack at it. He shoots under 50% at the free throw line, and Pittsburgh is next to last in the league in foul shooting at 60%. That is critical, job, particularly when you play a lot of close games and not a good start as Morris misses all three. Back the other way comes Tony Bethel. Dances down the lane, puts up the driving shot off the glass, and the first lead belongs to the Hoyas. This is a relatively young Georgetown team. Bethel, just a freshman. He starts in that number two guard spot, and what a great matchup here. If you like point guard play with Braswell and Knight, both excellent defenders and steel men as well. This is Jerron Brown, 6'4 in height, but very long arms, very strong physically. Knight thought about the three, takes it into the lane, tried to go low, gets it back as he bounced it off a Georgetown body. It's a very patient Pittsburgh team. Number one defensive team in the conference in Pitt, points allowed, top of the heap in Georgetown, the top scoring team in the conference. Something's got to give. And the shot clock was winding down, so he had to take the shot. Good feed to Sweetney, misses the shot. Well, that was a great pass by Braswell. You won't see Sweetney miss too many when he's in tight like that. You'd like to see him go ahead and jam it, wouldn't you? Stuff Absolutely. it in that situation. <laughs> yeah, send it down if you can. Here comes Page to the baseline. All the way in late, set up and go. We're tied at two. But John, you talked about Page. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Coming off the career high, 21 against Syracuse. And Brandon Knight with that sore right calf. Page has been stepping it up offensively of late. Wilson dumps it down inside. They tried to go back to him. And right there standing in the way was Knight. First Hoya turnover today. Georgetown does an excellent job of getting back. Two very quick teams today. They'll break if they have the opportunity. DeVoscus looks tonight. He penetrates. Brown now. Shot clock. Still plenty of time at 15. Page. Here he comes down the lane. That one will count. Pittsburgh has the lead. Craig Estrick questioning that, but way up here is Julius Page. 
I tell you what, he got it pretty quickly, but when you're up a foot over the cylinder, it looked like it was on its downward flight, just reached its feet. Tough call, but I think it was the right call. Inside, Wilson ties the game. You can see Georgetown, they'd like to quicken the pace of this game if they can. They score over 80 a game, and you've got a pit team that's been holding teams in the 50s, John, so again, tempo critical today. Foul is on Braswell, he'll pick up his first. As a matter of fact, Ronnie, 13 of the 20 opponents for the Panthers this year have scored 60 or less, and that includes Syracuse. It's unbelievable. The defensive focus has really worked. It also fits patience with the ball. They don't allow the opponent as many touches as they'd like to have. Here's Page as the first four for Pittsburgh. It's a 4-4 ball game, tied for the second time. Knight with it. Looks to Julius Page. Long three-pointer on the mark. Well, Page really picking up his offense the last three games. He's made all three of his shots so far this afternoon. There's no question he's looking for it more. He's feeling he's got the groove right now. Knight's got the sore cap, and Page stepping it up on, on the offense. Oh, nice fake. But he missed the shot. Morris has the rebound. He went to the right hand, tried to scoop it in, and missed it. Right, Braswell a lefty, great shifting move. Pitt off to a good start at home in front of the friendly Fitzgerald crowd here today. Not so friendly if you're visiting opponent. Not an easy place to come in and win. But Georgetown did win here last year. The Panthers, you have to go back to 1983. The last time they beat the Hoyas here. Zabaskis takes the shot, rims off. And the push off underneath, foul number one on Tory Morris. the action inside it will be very very physical and Pittsburgh has had its way against all but one team in the rebounding categories that was Rutgers they won that game at Rutgers anyway now it's 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 impressive they've done so well off the board team rebounding long three is off the mark the putback is good underneath good hustle and scramble inside that time by Bethel he has four some good boxing out inside but not with the guards let Got the body in there, but missed the shot. Panthers get it back. Three by Knight, too strong. There's Zavaskis, but ripped away by Wilson. Back come the Hoyas. Bethel spots for three. Good. Bethel on a roll. He matches the seven that Page has, and the Hoyas have their second lead. So much of point guard play is decision-making, and Braswell, the, the senior, the veteran, had people up ahead, didn't like what he saw, gave it to the wide-open Bethel for that open three which he can. Knight works off the screen, finds Zavaskis. An interesting matchup here with Sweetney. Zavaskis will pull Sweetney away from the goal. I think that's a plus for Pittsburgh to get the big fella out of the paint. Knight gets inside, scoops it home. His first basket. Brandon Knight who doesn't practice very much because of that problem with his right calf. Braswell to Sweeney trailing the play, lays it home. Sweetney gets his first two exactly what he was on that play. If you bring the ball down ahead of a couple of trailing players, they call trailers on the play. Continue to run if you're a big man, and that was very well done with the dish. And we played about four and a half minutes. Page tried to step to the baseline, and that's foul number two on Braswell. You can't afford to get him in foul trouble. Absolutely not. Craig Gesserick, got to be a concern there. He's either going to run with him and say, don't foul, or give him a rest for a few minutes, but he needs him on the floor. What makes the Nissan Pathfinder the envy of all SUVs? The number one selling import SUV in the Northeast. A five-star crash test rating. 240 horsepower. Hey, if you were an SUV, you'd be jealous too. And now, get low 3.9 APR for 60 months or 1,000 cash back on a new Pathfinder. Offers end January 31st. Nissan. Driven. Face it. If your home heating system's age is measured in decades, it's out of date. You cross your fingers hoping your old boiler will just keep running while you squander hundreds on wasted fuel. Better call your heating contractor about a dependable new slant fin boiler. It could save you up to 30% on fuel, and that's important these days. You know the name. Slant fin is America's number one brand of baseboard convection heating. Send that old boiler to the scrap heap. Get modern high-performance heating from slant fin. Call 516-B-O-I-L-E-R-S for a professional heating contractor near you. 
A message from Farmingdale Physical Therapy. When your physician refers you for physical therapy treatments, what they're actually doing is referring you to a particular physical therapist or facility. Here are some qualities of good physical therapy treatment. The physical therapist should supervise the treatment or perform the treatment directly. The physical therapist should provide hands-on care. You should see the same physical therapist for each visit. With these principles, you should have a positive experience and excellent recovery. Farmingdale Physical Therapy. In Watt. Nine lead. They got that lead because the big man, Mike Sweetney, was trailing the play, and Braswell used good judgment to set him up. But uh, Brandon Knight doing a little penetration of his own. Yeah, he's so good at that, and so is Braswell. That's what you look for with point guards. Nice finish there by Knight. And now what he does next time is he creates an opportunity for a pass, or he'll, people will back off him, and the jump shot will be there. He shoots the three well also. You see the last meeting, the shooting, and what's happening today. Both teams off to a good start shooting the ball. And Pittsburgh will inbound under its own basket with 14.20 remaining to be played. We're in the first half here this afternoon in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Looks like a zone here to start off by Georgetown. It's a 2-3. And one sub in that Harvey Thomas has checked into the lineup for Georgetown and for Pittsburgh. Chad Johnson is in there. There's a miss. Sweetney wrestling with Wilson, but he has the rebound. Hall also into the lineup for the first time. Drew, a freshman from Silver Spring, the dump down to Sweetney. Draws a double team and threw it right into the hands of Brandon Knight. Knight's done that twice. You're going to see him pick the ball off. Braswell does the same thing for Georgetown. They're very quick. Page for three. Made his first, missed his second. Hall has the rebound. That's a good look the way Page has been shooting it, but a little quick by Ben Howland's standards. And there's another three for the freshman Bethel. That's his second. He's in double figures with 10. He's made all four of his shots, and the Hoyas have their biggest lead of the first half. The freshman stepping up early from the perimeter. This is a better perimeter Georgetown team than they've had the past couple of years. And then they've got Sweetney down in the blocks. McCarroll is in that Pittsburgh lineup as well. Johnson hands it to Julius Page. 14-9. This is where Knight settles things, gets people into their position, and right now, seven on the shot clock. Needs some action. McCarroll can shoot the three. That's too strong. Sweetney just blocks out lead in the corner, and the Hoyas will get it back. Checking in the first time for Pittsburgh is Siobhan Troutman. Freeman heads to the bench for Georgetown. And Gerald Riley is back on. 12.59 to play. We're in the first half. 14 to 9 is our score. And the Hoyas so far have two three-pointers. The Panthers have one. Now playing without Braswell right now. Hall out there handling the point guard duties for Georgetown. See if Pitt increases the defensive pressure. Hall with three-pointer on the way. And that's the third for Georgetown in the first half. That's his 13th on the season. And just like that, the Panthers can have to take a timeout. They'll take a 30-second timeout. They fall eight points behind thanks to some three-point shooting by Tony Bethel and also Drew Hall. That's a good start for Georgetown. Actually, Pitt put off to the good start. It was 7-4, and all of a sudden, you've got Georgetown with a 13-2 run, John, and they've shot the ball well. Bethel, Drew Hall, getting that one done. Hall was, of course, the look a week ago, a wide-open look that ribbed in and out uh, after he had the Jerron Brown basket and what was a back-and-forth tough matchup. If this is going to be like last week, expect these runs because there were a lot of those big runs in the game last week at the MCI Center. Team got hot. The defense really bore down and the intensity level was high. So the other team got both of it back and forth the whole game. But at the end, which I think could happen again today, John, I think we could have a very tight finish in this ball game. Panthers won that game 68-67. They upset the Hoyas, who were ranked ninth in the country last year in Washington, D.C., and then Georgetown came right back and beat Pittsburgh here. Knight, McCarroll, starts to move in the lane, takes it all the way down and has it blocked. Hoyas control, Drew Hall with it in front of his own bench. Here's Wilson, the foul line, stolen by Knight. Pulls up third <laughs> Georgetown turnover. You know what they say, don't bring that ball down around the little men or you could lose it. Nice job by Knight. He tried to go back door to McCarroll that time and it was stolen away by Riley. Back come the Hoyas, jumper on the side off the glass, too strong. Shot taken by Thomas, rebound, here come the Panthers, they'll walk it up. Good job by Knight, you just put the hand up, say let's get ourselves together. That's what the quarterback does for you. Talking to him before the game, Johnny said, 
we're playing well. I said, you've got to be playing with a lot of confidence. He said, we are, but we've got to play every game like we're the underdogs. Brown and Bobalikas will check back in to the Pittsburgh lineup as the Panthers were not happy with that call. 17-9, the Hoyas leading here in Pittsburgh. What makes the new 255 horsepower I can hear it. of the envy of all luxury performance sedans? A top 10 engine, eight years running. Voted best in class. 50 safety features. Hey, if you were a luxury performance sedan, you'd be jealous too. And now, get low 3.9 APR for 60 months or 1,000 cash back on a new Max. Offers end January 31st. Nissan. Rip it. Tire is proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Points right now with 11.42 remaining here in the first half. Big East basketball, Notre Dame beating Seton Hall at home 60-51 to 51 this afternoon. And UConn just getting by number 12 Arizona. That's a big win. I'll tell you, the Huskies getting better and better, aren't they? Yeah, they're playing great ball for Jimmy Calhoun. Undefeated in conference play. That's a big one against Lute Olsen's club in a non-conference battle. Big win, John. Well, I'll tell you what, you play it's tough enough in the Big East Conference, and right in the middle of January, you go to Arizona. How about that? Just mix that one right in there. Wow. Is every one of these games in conference play a battle, as we've seen so far this year in the conference? In over three minutes since the Panthers have scored a point. They're down 17 to 9. Bethel has had a huge start to this game. Ten points already. Made every shot he's taken, and he turns it over as Knight steals it from him. John, that's got to be nice for steal. A little too much dribbling that time by the freshman. He'll, he'll know better next time around night. Troutman bounces it off his own leg, trying to get around Cortland Freeman. And the Hoy is playing without Victor Somnick. He has a foot problem in his right foot. Probably will not play in this game today. It's been bothering him. He's going to sit this one out. And Kevin Braswell continues to sit. And the Hoy is doing a good job. He's got the two fouls. So Craig Estrick not taking a chance, but another turnover. Brown spins and traveled, I think. Or was he fouled before? He was spinning trying to set up Chad Johnson and was fouled on the play by the freshman Drew Hall from Silver Spring, Maryland. Turned out to be a good foul. Watch it. Cage is about, well, he did anyways. He's got to slam this thing down. There's your foul. Oh, man. With emphasis, but not counting with the foul happening before the ball was delivered. Panthers go back to their original starting lineup now. Bring it out to Zavaskis. He's back on the court. Page as well. Julius Page got off to the quick start with seven points. The Panthers now about four minutes since they've scored a point. Well, it's a two-three zone. You should penetrate and find a man open here for the jump shot against this zone. It could be Page. Knight. He can also hit that three. Zavaskis will shoot a three from deep in the corner and nails it. So Zavaskis, with his 22nd third pointer of the season, brings the Panthers back to within five. Here's Freeman. Thomas inside. Wilson off the glass. Too strong. Airmailed that one. Brown. He can really <laughs> scramble and scrap for those rebounds. Talked about him at the beginning. He's 6'4, but Brown finds a way inside to get it done. Knight getting the guards in foul trouble because that'll be number two on Drew Hall. Georgetown foul call is number five. Drew Hall. That's his second. Team fifth. Well, there's that last one where the ball just never catches iron for Wilson, but Brown not only gets six where he plays bigger, but he also has a rebounder's mentality. He likes to mix it up. He's very strong at 228 pounds. And the Panthers, he tried to step through the trap, 
could not, and the Hoyas get it on the takeaway. <laughs> oh, Brown got tied up, didn't call time, and turns the ball over. You won't see that happen often. He's strong, and he's hard to rip it from him. That was a scrappy play. And he turned that one over. It's a call you don't see very often. No, it isn't. And here comes Kevin Braswell. Craig Gensberg saying, all right, he's got two fouls, sat him out for a few minutes, but now we're starting to see the turnovers mounting by that young, young freshman Hoya backcourt. And Thomas, another freshman, checks out as Riley is back on for Georgetown. And there's the conversation on that Hoya bench. Two guys that have been there a long time, Mike Riley, one of the assistants for Craig Eshrick. They were coaches under John Thompson for many years. And of course, Eshrick played for John. That's right, Craig's been associated with the Georgetown program for 25 years. Page for three, bending, bending, no good. That's gonna be a foul on Morris. He'll pick up his second. Corey Morris fighting for the rebound. Called for the foul from behind. He'll head to the bench, his left return. Check it out, a lot of action inside. Tory Morris right there climbing on Sweetney. You know, with all the banging and bumping, as Ben Howland might have a case. There, yeah. was, there was a bump, but you know, the way those guys go at it, not a heavy one. There's always a bump in there, isn't there? <laughs> it sure is. Contact action. Pitt stays man-to-man. -man. Wilson, aggressive at the offensive end, but too strong off the glass. The put back by Gerald Riley. The lead is seven for the Hoyers. We are about 11 minutes into this first half. This is where you like Jerron Brown. Not only can he rebound, but he can also handle the ball and really gives Pitt a three-guard alignment when you think of Knight, Page, and Brown when he goes to the perimeter. And those are the three out there right now. As Lett is on, they try to go to Lett. He makes a nice catch and puts it up and in. Well, I thought Zavosky could airmail that one into the seat. <laughs> well, Lett's got good hands. He's got long arms. He is a long player. He's strong. He can give him some good minutes if he stays out of foul trouble. Brazel working hard outside. Help from Savaska. This is Bethel, the freshman, off the screen. And all alone was Wilson underneath. Well, that's why coaches stress rotating the ball, swing the ball, because if you get it on the strong side and reverse it, a lot of times men are wide open. 21-14, Georgetown. Noyes. Staying in that zone defense for the moment. Matchup zone. It's 2-3, but they're matching up. Looks like a man-to-man -man after the pass is made. Zavaskas with a three, and that's good. Zavaskas with his second three-pointer here in the first half. Panthers climbed to within four. Both of these teams have it, John. They've got good balance. People can step up and make shots. Both teams very unselfish. That's why they play very evenly when they get together. Had a terrific matchup a week ago today. Braswell's three on the way and good. Kevin Braswell's first field goal reopens a seven-point lead. It's like a shooting clinic today, John. Players stepping up and dropping them in. Left to Page, and now the Panthers still have 25 on the shot clock. Zavoskis has made a pair of threes. That's been big for Pittsburgh so far. That's a foul on Zavoskis. An offensive foul on Zavoskis. It'll be his first foul, the third team foul, and it's still a seven-point Hoya lead in Pittsburgh. Hungry? You've come to the right place. The home of great brands and great taste. Conagra Foods. We set America's table. Still hungry? Conagra has the foods America craves at mealtime, snack time, or any time. Conagra Foods. We set America's table. At Advanced Auto Parts, we believe in doing it yourself. So we made this commercial ourselves. Yeah, we're rolling. Go ahead. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Can you come down here for a second? We are so getting a raise. Prices! Not prizes. We don't, we don't have prizes. Do we have prizes? Sure, the holidays are over, but it's not too late to open one of these. 
the compact Rosario 1700T notebook. It's got hot swappable drives and the incredibly fast mobile Intel Pentium 3 processor M for just $1349. Plus, we'll give you a carrying case and an extra battery free. So give yourself one last holiday present to open before this deal closes. Call 1-888-271-1826 to get yours now. The Hoyas have led most of this first half. We have 719 to play, and as we come back to Fitzgerald, let's take a look at our Hyundai game summary, at least at this point in the ball game, and of course it's still to be determined. But our Hyundai game summary goes like this. Hoyas shooting very well at almost 60%, and four or five of those three-pointers. 11 rebounds, so the Hoyas have the edge there. Bethel is off to a great start for Georgetown. Well, that's the story for Georgetown. They're shooting it very well. The three's going down. Bethel, Hall, Zavaskis has made a couple of pitch. So we've got ourselves a good one here. Man-to-man -man by the Panthers. Braswell back in. He's got to be careful. He's got two. Wilson has been very aggressive at the offensive end. Bethel looks to get it back to him and almost had it taken away for a second time by Knight. <laughs> You cannot hold on to that ball too much around here. Be decisive. Sweet, and he skips it all the way over for Bethel's three, and he's got his third three-pointer in a row. 13 points for Bethel, 10-point lead, biggest of the afternoon. Well, Georgetown is on a roll right now. This is just like it was a week ago. Teams went back and forth with runs. The Hoyas in a 1-3-1 right now, and Pitt needs some penetration and movement, and, and they'd like to get a hoop right here. Jerron Brown with a chance for a three-point play as he used the glass. The foul goes on and Bethel, picks up his first, and Brown has his first field goal of the afternoon. Well, he's strong. Here's an example of it right here. He just out-muscles Bethel as he goes in there. Bethel, 6'2", just weighs 165, and Brown, 229 on the scales, and that's where he takes a guard, and he can go inside on him. But the Panthers 0 for 3 in shooting free throws so far this afternoon. Yeah, that, that is a killer, especially when you think of where you are late in the game. It's not just the late free throws, it's the early ones that get you there. Well, the only team that shoots the foul shots worse than Pittsburgh is Rutgers. Yeah, they've been struggling from the line, no question about it. 2-3 right now by Pitt. Braswell steps into a double team and gets it back to Bethel. Inside Sweetney. Powers his way through, but has it stolen by Brown. Great help out from the weak side by Jerron Brown. Seventh, Hoya turnover. Knight, crossover. Dumps it down the left. He missed the shot point blank. Gets it back. Well, it caught Knight an assist, but a great effort by Lett. He's given the team a big lift, and right now, you sense a little bit of a momentum swing. Wilson kicks it for three, but Bethel steps around it, goes to the baseline, and that'll be an offensive foul. Tony Bethel, the third Hoya guard with two fouls in the early going. I think Bethel had that perimeter shot, created the action on this one. Boom, good take right there by Led. He should have taken the jump or just reversed the ball. Harvey Thomas will take his place as Bethel, who is on fire with 13 first half points, sits down. 27 21, the difference at six. Panthers have it, five and a half to play first half. And this is a lot like last Saturday as these teams had runs back and forth. The Hoyas, though, have been able to maintain their lead. Pitt had a big lead in the first half last Saturday, and at halftime, Georgetown was ahead. It's tough to maintain the offensive shooting because both teams play good defense. It's tough to sustain it. Good move by Johnson, couldn't finish the shot, tipped up and in, somehow by Troutman. Wow, <laughs> he was just keeping the ball alive and it went in the basket. Uh, it's a good example of why you want to keep it alive and I think the English brought it back in. Braswell's three, short, tipped back. Freeman kept that alive for Georgetown. Hoyas have it, Braswell, Thomas steps in and uses the glass. Boy, that was a wild scramble. These are two very aggressive and scrappy teams. That time Georgetown wins out with a good finish. Good job by keeping the ball alive by Cortland Freeman, a guy that is one of the co-captains, even though he didn't play much last year running because of injury. Doing all the little things there, John. Keeping it alive, allowing your team to do something positive with the ball. Here's Troutman, Zavaska. Page for three, has one, has two, and he's got a chance for a four-point play. <laughs> the foul is on Thomas. Body's flying. I don't know if Trump has 
Jeff Fowler and John Allen, both guys on the hardwood. Check it out. Troutman just gets blown away on the screen, and the jumper goes down. And Page got hit as well. But we're the bonus now. So if it is on Troutman, no, it's going to be Page. <laughs> Looks like it could have gone either yeah. way, but I think it's going to be Page at the line, fighting through the screen, and then Page got hit with Harvey Thomas. So Page is one of the... the Craig Etrick might be questioning that right now. He might be asking John Cal to take a look. But both coaches have been wandering the court from end to end, and John Cal wants to settle them down. John is the referee. He's had a word with both. 4-18 to play. Three-point game, but a chance to make it two, I think, if Paige shoots. If he doesn't shoot, the other guy's got a chance to make two, right? That's right. That's right. And I think the officials are going to look at it to see. So we will... It looked, it looked like Harvey Thomas blasted through the Troutman screen. Let's take another look at it. That's the finish hoop at the end, but you can see Troutman down as well. It looked like Thomas barreled into him before Troutman, I think, then on the ricochet went into Page on it. I think we're going to see Troutman actually shooting when he comes out. Now, let me ask you this. Is that good news or bad news? Troutman is four for 13 at the line. <laughs> Julius Page is an 82% shooter. He's got three on the board already. You'd almost rather have him have one than have the other guy have the one and one, wouldn't you? Yeah, you probably would if you were Ben Howland. The officials doing a good job there. They're looking at it across the way from us, and the key is they want to get it right. And I think it was Troutman that got barreled into. And we're going to see him as the eighth Georgetown foul shooting a one-on-one -on -one from the strike. Well, Page has got kind of a wry little smile on his face. John Cal over there with the headset, checking it out. And the picture's being provided by, there's the push-off. And eventually he comes through, but you don't really see the finish from that angle, do you? Page will be shooting. Correction number two, Siobhan Trotman shooting one and one. They have straightened it out. It will be a one and one for Siobhan Trotman. played 19 minutes and played very well against the Hoyas a week ago. Well, they've got four points out of this play so far. Trotman, the redshirt freshman from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Crazy play. They got it right. <laughs> you know, and Trotman played well a week ago against Georgetown. Ben Holland giving him some quality minutes, so he may just feel confident playing in this game again after his performance a week ago. It is a four-point possession for Pittsburgh and a two-point ball game. 27, just over four minutes left first half. Riley on the perimeter. Tapped away by Brown. Johnson to Brown. Couple of Panthers trailing. Brown takes it in. Nice job by Brown. Suddenly a run here coming together for Pitt. And Fitzgerald involved. It is a game of runs today, John. And it is the Panthers running back into a 29-29 tie with 3.56 remaining in the first half. Wilson will check back into that Hoya lineup. job by Brown to stay with it, put it up. He was the one that started the whole thing, Ronnie, by getting the deflection and eventually got the basket. Well, good defense can key good offense, and you want to get the finish as you saw Pitt get right there. Troutman with a lift. You see the lead changes today, the ties. These are two evenly matched teams. Played to one point a week ago, and we've got ourselves another good one here today. Brown had the big basket a week ago. The tip in that won the game. Of course, the Hoyas did have a pretty good look in that last shot last Saturday, didn't they? They really did, John. I mean, it was, uh, you know, an open look for Hall, a big tip in, and, and everything there. You couldn't complain if you were Georgetown. Good look. Sometimes it goes down, sometimes it doesn't. Wilson, now a scramble inside. Sweetney comes out of there and taken away by Brown. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. Brown just goes after Sweetney. Not an easy guy to take it from. Shows you how strong he is. That's 10 turnovers here in the first half by Georgetown. The Hoyas coming into the game averaging 16. They've already had 10 today.
This lineup has worked pretty well for Pittsburgh. One thing about Ben Howland's team this year, he's been able to kind of mix and match and do a good job. Yeah, plays about eight guys, but sometimes you find the right combination. A nice rejection by Sweetney. Sweetney with the block, his 29th on the year. Wilson leads the Hoyas in blocks with 41. We're tied at 29 inside the three-minute mark. Sweetney got to get more involved in this Georgetown offense. Pitt really denying him Zavoskis, and they've been doubling down when he gets the ball. Braswell for the lead. His second field goal. 31-29, Hoyas on top. Well, you have to take what the defense gives you. A lot of collapsing down on Sweetney. As a result, perimeter shots opening up in the Hoyas. Doing a good job making them in this first half. Johnson, the only senior on this team, Chad, in his fifth year. Page for three and the lead short. Johnson keeps it alive, takes it back, dumps it down. Trotman for the top. Beautiful dish by Johnson that time. Presence to rebound, penetrate, and then that nice drop pass. Final two minutes, first half. Fifth time we have been tied. Sweetney to untie. Too strong Page on the weak side. That's why Pitt's a good rebounding team. Page, another backcourt kid, but he can really get up. Johnson gets inside and gives the Panthers the lead. Chad Johnson, the Panthers making this run without Brandon Knight. Well, that's, that's surprising because they rely on Knight, but the bench doing a good job right now. Wilson inside, ties it again. It's a good look by Georgetown. Wilson is a big man in there, and with Sweetney and Wilson, the Hoyas should go down low when they can. 33-33, a minute 24 to play in the first half. Johnson with Brown, Zavaskis, Troutman, and Julius Page. Zavaskis a couple of big threes, turns it over. Braswell now, the Hoyas with a chance to take the lead. Can't get around Brown. Bethel spots for three. Off the mark. Tipped up and into the hands of Brown. That's a good job by Brown to stop the Braswell penetration. He comes, reverses, misses the shot. <laughs> Traveling violation. Pittsburgh ball. This is going to be a wild afternoon, Ronnie. I guarantee you that. No doubt about it. Coaches are into it. Players are into it. We've got all kinds of action here at Fitzgerald. They will leave nothing on the floor this afternoon. 33-33, final minute, first half. Why are more and more people test driving the Hyundai Accent? Ask Cyril Fowler. I actually went online and did a little research. You get a lot for your money. And the new 2002 Accent has the standard features you want. Plus, the freedom of the Hyundai Advantage, America's best warranty plan. I love the Accent. At just $8,994, it's easy to see why more people are driving home the new 2002 Hyundai Accent. Freedom is calling, yeah. Hyundai, helping kids fight cancer. Three big reasons why Beaner is better. It's just amazing how many Audis they have in stock. It seems like they always have the car that I'm looking for. It's a pleasure getting your car serviced at Beaner Audi. They make it so easy. Over the years, at least eight cars from Beaner, the customer service department speaks for itself. Our family has satisfied over one million customers since 1929. Come see for yourself why Beaner is better. I think so, so far, because Georgetown, very hot shooting the basketball, but also, Ronnie, they've been turning it over. Exactly, and when you do that, you can't capitalize on You can see Pittsburgh forcing them, getting some points. Georgetown unable to take advantage. It's been a good first half, though, John. It looks like Pitt can get a little bit of an advantage, and then Georgetown surges. Pitt comes right back a lot like what we saw a week ago. And we've just begun. The first half is not over yet. Miners stick around with the Big East Wire coming up at halftime. Check some other Big East games. We gave you a couple of tips as to what happened earlier today. Big win for UConn on the road outside the conference. Notre Dame at home with a win. 
Come more on that coming up at intermission. Interesting first half. Mike Sweetney and Brandon Knight, the team's top scorers, with just two points each in this first half. And that'll be offensive goaltending, basket interference, ball on um, left, trying to get a hand up there. Of course, actually, the ball was not on the cylinder, it was under the back. Well, the call is that the ball, if the ball's touching the rim or on or above the cylinder, it's offensive interference, but that was the ruling on that one. Might have caught it just as it was on the rim. There's a seven second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And the Hoy is now. Hall is back on. Using three guards right now with Braswell and Bethel out there. So three guards for Georgetown. Braswell's done a good job to not commit number three and doesn't want to do it in the last 20 seconds. Hoy is trying to find a good one here. Inside Wilson turns, shoots. Bending a foul call with 14 seconds to go. That foul is going to be on Ontario left. It will be his first. The Panthers have not had a problem with fouls. Only four team fouls for Pittsburgh so far. Two of them, though, going against Morris, one against Lett. So it's been all the big men picking up the fouls. Pretty amazing, John, in this kind of a physical, aggressive game that they've really sealed off the inside with Sweetney and forced shots from the perimeter and the Hoyas have done a nice job actually converting they'd like to get more production I'm sure from Sweetney in the second half offense defense as Hillier comes in he is a football player basketball player Riley is back on as well Wilson at the line and he gets them both so a pair at the line for Wesley Wilson he has eight Donatus will check in for Pittsburgh Donatus Zavascus and it's a two-point lead but the Panthers have time for their final possession actually plenty of time Knight with the ball looks to penetrate right now the six on the clock Knight comes up short rebound Sweetney and that will do it for the first half, just as they did last Saturday at home. The Hoyas will go to the locker room with a halftime lead. We'll check out the Big East Wire and more when we come back with halftime from Pittsburgh after this. Why are more and more people test driving the Hyundai Elantra? Ask Michael Edo. I drive a thousand miles a week and the gas mileage is outstanding. And the new 2002 Elantra has so many standard features, including front and side airbags, air conditioning, stereo cassette and power package, plus the freedom of the Hyundai Advantage, America's best warranty plan. At just $13,294, it's easy to see why more people are driving home the new Hyundai Elantra. Yeah. Hyundai, helping kids fight cancer. Washers and dryers on sale. And get 10% cash back on all appliances over $3.99 at Sears or else. I have always depended on the kindness of fiduciaries. I tried to be smart about financial matters and all that. But in fact, uh, I don't think very well about such matters as I, you know, too busy thinking about other stuff. The most sensible investments I've made have been made by others. For 80 years, TIA CREF has managed money for people with other things to think about. Log on to see what we can do for you. Goodbye, everyone. I'll miss you. Washers and dryers on sale. And get 10% cash back on all appliances over $3.99 at Sears or else. Welcome back to Fitzgerald Fieldhouse in Pittsburgh. We're on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. The Panthers hosting the Hoyas of Georgetown in Big East basketball. Time now to take a look at the Big East Wire. Since its inception in 1979, the Big East Conference has produced some of the greatest point guards college basketball has ever seen. From Mark Jackson to Sherman Douglas. And then down to Allen Iverson, Big East basketball and great point guard play have become synonymous. The steady introduction of impact point guards to the Big East is no different this year. Three fresh faces look to challenge the record books. West Virginia freshman four general Jonathan Hargett was highly touted coming out of high school in Virginia. Preseason pick the Big East freshman of the year, and he is second on his team in scoring, leads the team in assists, and has impressed his new peers with his late game heroics. Armstead, Hargett, Hargett's jumper. Yes! He's a 
a great passer, uh, excellent ball handler. Um, he can shoot, uh, find the open man, play defense. I mean, he pretty much has a, has a, a complete package. Named Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana a year ago, Chris Thomas of Notre Dame has added an important piece to the Irish offensive puzzle with more poise and savvy than most veteran players. Thomas makes his presence felt on both the offensive and defensive ends of the court, proving that he's had little trouble adjusting to the college game. We pretty much handed him the ball at freshman orientation and said, you're running the team. And he's he has absolutely uh, done a great job with that. But perhaps the point guard who's had the greatest impact on the Big East this season is junior college transfer Marcus Hatton of St. John. The elder of the first year point guards, Hatton leads his team in nearly every statistical category, not to mention jumpstarting a rebuilding Red Storm program into what is now a contender for the conference crown. Forces the shot of a shell of the hits of the Next up, we'll check out some Big East scores. Top 25 action from today as we continue with Big East basketball from Pittsburgh. <laughs> When it comes to learning, there's no limit to one's hopes, to one's ambitions. The key to it is a really old Jesuit idea, and that is that study is always to produce results in the world and for the sake of the world. Georgetown University, a home for scholarship, faith, and service. Homeowners, call Garden State Brick Bay's windows and exteriors and get a new house without having to move or spend a fortune. That's right. You can give your home a new look and feel any look you desire. And it just takes one phone call. For years, we've been beautifying thousands of area homes, making them more energy efficient while increasing their value. Brick, stucco, stone, siding, and window. Quality craftsmanship, most work done within a week. All maintenance-free and fully guaranteed. Let us help you design the perfect look for your home. Call Garden State Brick Bay's windows and exteriors. To find out if our unique products are right for you, call now for a free telephone consultation. It just takes a few minutes. There's absolutely no obligation. 100% financing available. So why wait when a simple call can get you a great new house without spending a fortune? Call 1-800-647-1600 and ask about our current special discounts. Shop from home with our exclusive free telephone consultation. Call 1-800-647-1600. For more than 350 years, Connecticut has been home to the most industrious people in the world. We've given the world the helicopter, the spacesuit, even the bicycle, and helped change how we all live and work. Connecticut continues to innovate with leading edge technology, from high tech to biogenetics. Guess you can say that Yankee ingenuity is still in our genes. Call the Connecticut Development Authority today. We'll help you succeed. They say we could all use a little direction in life. So when you're looking for a Ford car or truck, just get yourself to Babylon Ford, 495 Montauk Highway, just east of Route 231. At Babylon Ford, you'll find competitive prices, no sales pressure, and no gains. Come in today and get the fuel-efficient Ford Focus with a low lease rate of just $249 a month. Babylon Ford, Blue Oval certified and easy to find. We at Babylon Ford send out our deepest sympathies to all Americans during this time of tragedy. It was named Most Beautiful Car in the World by the Italian Press and Best Value in its Class by Strategic Vision. And after outselling the Mercedes C-Class all summer, it's ready to take on winter. The Volvo S60, available now with all-wheel drive. It adheres to everything but convention. Halftime nourishment for the fans of sold out Fitzgerald Fieldhouse this afternoon on our halftime score has Georgetown on top by two at 35 to 33. We mentioned there were a couple of biggies games earlier today, Ron. Well, there were some good games today. How about Notre Dame bouncing back and getting a victory with 
Ryan Humphrey stepping up in Connecticut with a very big win, non-league against number 12, Arizona, by a deuce. Jimmy Calhoun's club playing very well. Won that in overtime. Syracuse will be playing Virginia Tech later tonight. Providence plays at St. John. That is a 9 o'clock start, and Rutgers at West Virginia. That's tomorrow, a game that was originally a two, pushed back a little bit because there's something else going on in town here tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that's right, a little championship AFC game between the Steelers and the New England Patriots. West Virginia in this one. John trying to get on the win column right there. It is critical that the Mountaineers get a victory because they've got Rutgers at home. They've got Providence at home this week and they need a couple of wins. Top 25 action. 94-92 Arkansas over Florida. So the Gators go down to defeat. Cincinnati rolls on by 10 over South Florida. South Florida, a team that earlier this year beat Pittsburgh. That's a nice win right there. Texas Tech and Bobby Knight getting it done against number six, Oklahoma. That's a big one. And the Illini falling to Indiana. That's a big game for Indiana. Check it out. 17 threes in that one. Is that a 31-point uh, difference Whoa. in that game? Wow. Wake Forest over Georgia Tech. And Missouri has defeated Kansas State. The bad day for my alma mater. The Wildcats going down to the Tigers of Missouri. Here we've got the Hoyas. We've got the Panthers. We have another half of basketball coming up. to realize our brightest hopes for the future. Forging better lives through research. Working creatively to develop human potential. The University of Pittsburgh. Are you tired of crawling around on your knees or doing endless sit-ups and still not getting the results you want? Now you can get up to 700 muscle contractions in just 10 minutes without breaking a sweat and get the tone and definition you've always wanted. Introducing the revolutionary Ab Energizer System featuring 21st century technology that's a simple, easy way to help give you firm, toned abs. And guess what? You're not even going to break a sweat. The secret is Ab Energizer's electronic impulses that stimulate the abs so they contract and relax as if you're doing a sit-up. Now, you can work out your abs anywhere, watching TV, at the office, even around the house. And it's also great for your lower back, buns, and thighs. I've been using Ab Energizer for two weeks, and I definitely feel stronger abs. Instantly, you feel like you just have done 100 sit-ups. By using the Ab Energizer, it's actually provided me with incredible results. I've lost 40 pounds. I've gone from a waist 37 to a waist 34. Some app stimulators have all kinds of wires and cost over $600. Single unit products can cost $120 or more. They wear out quickly and only make contact at one point. With the double unit app energizer, you get two modes and 10 settings to maximize your workout. Well, the app energizer at about half the price gives you not one, but up to four different contacts making it more effective by targeting multiple muscle groups for faster results. Call now to order the complete Ab Energizer system for just $59.95. It includes the Ab Energizer belt with two units, tightening gel, meal plan, an instruction guide, and carrying case. But that's not all. You'll also get a free 30-day supply of Diet Energizer with its fat-burning formula. The Ab Energizer system is guaranteed. If you don't lose at least two inches off your waist in the first 30 days, return it for a full refund of the purchase price, no questions asked. To order your Ab Energizer, call now. Georgetown has a two-point lead at halftime, and this is very similar to the situation last week. Georgetown led much of that first half. Of course, last week it was Pittsburgh getting off to the big lead. Hoy has led at halftime. Let's show you some stats right now. And again, Georgetown shooting the ball at a blistering pace so far. They have shot the ball well. It's been tough going in the paint area, but look at that, 58%. They've done a great job. The threes have been going down. They've got a rebound advantage, but they've turned it over, so it's been a tight game. Pitt shot the ball just below 50% themselves, have hurt themselves from the line, but both teams have shot it pretty well. We've got a tight game. And I look for a good second half. I look for Sweeten to get, to get more involved. And I think Knight will as well for Pitt. I'll tell you who got involved early for Georgetown. It was the freshman Bethel. He was red hot. He had three three-pointers in the first half. Really got his team off and rolling. He sure did. And this is the outside shooting we were just talking about. Bethel wide open on that one. The freshman's got a very nice touch. Eventually he had to sit with a couple of personal fouls. 
Julius Page, though, can sit, continues to be red hot for a bit as he was connecting from the outside. That was a nice three. And Shavon Truckman seems to like to play against Georgetown. Played very well last week with a beautiful tip on that play. And this is Chad Johnson, the dish of Truckman. Good team effort. Tightly contested game, first half. We expect more of the same in the sold out Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. 35 33, back with the second half after this. Federal law requires all advertisers to provide reasonable support for advertising claims before they are made. Was that reasonable enough? BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Drive one at your local BMW center. the game and try to win, not to cheat, and to play by the rules, because it's not good to cheat, to be nice, and laugh at other people, to play fair, and to not try and hurt people, don't like to take the um, umpire and like push them, and they're supposed to be a good sport, they get a game when you put your hands out. <laughs> Sure, the holidays are over, but it's not too late to open one of these. The Compact Rosario 1700T Notebook. It's got hot swappable drives and the incredibly fast mobile Intel Pentium 3 Processor M for just $1349. Plus, we'll give you a carrying case and an extra battery free. So give yourself one last holiday present to open before this deal closes. Call 1-888-271-1826 to get yours now. memorable day of your life starts here at the Larkfield Manor. It begins with attention to detail, marvelous choices, and superior elegance. You and your guests will be enchanted by the timeless beauty the Larkfield Manor has to offer. And the memories will last a lifetime. The Larkfield Manor. Elegance made simple. They say we could all use a little direction in life. So when you're looking for a Ford car or truck, just get yourself to Babylon Ford, 495 Montauk Highway, just east of Route 231. At Babylon Ford, you'll find competitive prices, no sales pressure, and no gains. Come in today and get the fuel-efficient Ford Focus with a low lease rate of just $249 a month. Babylon Ford, Blue Oval certified and easy to find. We at Babylon Ford send out our deepest sympathies to all Americans during this time of tragedy. second half trailing by two here in Fitzgerald Fieldhouse and right before we start the second half let's take a moment to thank our corporate partner Cooper Tire proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference Cooper Tires drive off I'm John Sanders with Ron Perry this is going to be a good one this afternoon <laughs> huh? shaping up that way we could tell you know at the beginning even though Pitt pulls ahead and then Georgetown pulled ahead both of these teams good rebounders they play tough defense Quickness is there. Georgetown shot it very well in the first half. Sweetney with just a bucket. I look for these guys to head up. Bethel, you can see they really stepped it up. And of course, Julius Page leading the way with 10 for the Panthers. Brandon Knight with it. Braswell starts the second half. Both teams going with their original starters. Sweetney, Riley, Wilson, Braswell, and Bethel for the Hoyas. Brown, Zavascus, Morris, Page, and Knight for the Panthers. This is Morris out on the perimeter. Zavascus had a pair of three-pointers in the first half. Leading scorer for Pittsburgh, though, was Julius Page, who also hit two trays. Leading scorer in the game is Tony Bethel, who hit three in the first half. Man-to-man -man by Georgetown. Both clubs will play primarily man. They'll show some zone, and Pitt will be patient, working quite a bit of clock. Page rattles home a three. He beat the shot clock by a second to give the Panthers the lead. So that's the way the Panthers like to do it. They like to be patient, work it around, 
And now they're playing a 2-3 zone right now. It was effective a week ago, and they're mixing it up right now. Almost got him an immediate steal. Riley with it. Braswell will push out on him. Riley will try to answer with a three. It's short. Morris has it for Pittsburgh. Back comes Brandon Knight. That's what the zone gives you. Generally, the perimeter shot. And again, the Panthers are not afraid to play half court, are they? No, they're not. And that's why one of the reasons they play very good defense. They also are patient with the ball. Combination of those two teams, you're your top defensive team in terms of points allowed in the conference. Just over 57 points per game allowed. They're one of the best in the nation. And the shot clock again a factor. The pass down underneath. No basket. And that is going to be a foul on Tony Bethel. Excuse me. It's Gerald Riley, not Tony Bethel. Riley picks it up. His first. Great penetration by Knight. The walk the Knight. That was a great catch, too, by Brown. You see Bethel right there, 22, with that reach in. Didn't get away with it. Riley with his first foul quickly heads to the bench. Quick inbound play to Brown and scores. Panthers by three. I thought Bethel might have reached as well on that one. Thank you. <laughs> Start of the second half can really give you a good momentum swing, obviously going into the latter part, part of the second half. Good start by Pitt out of the locker room. Offensive rebound, Wilson and a putback. That's double figures for Wesley Wilson. He's got 10. Didn't look like he covered some ground with that up big. Well, he's got big strides. He's a big boy. Yeah, that's for sure. 6'11", 235. A junior out of Vallejo, California. 6'8", signee Brandon Bowman from California coming in next year. Bending off. Zavatskis misses once. Got it back. Up again. This one swatted away. Bethel took his eyes off the ball, turns it back over. So a break for the Panthers, and once again, Riley will check back in. And Thomas, back to the bench. And Thomas was too casual with that pass. Craig Eschrick not pleased. Made the quick substitution. Kind of a no-look pass, and Ronnie Thompson talking to him, saying, just, you know, shovel it over there, but look at your man, get it, and then go to the basket. Well, I guarantee you there was a look from coach to player when he sat down, wasn't there? Yeah, it was somewhere. The coach was looking at him. It was a message look. <laughs> Here's the Vasquez. Ed Page momentarily along the baseline. Now has to hand to Knight. Bethel will mark him. 17-10 to play in the game. Pittsburgh by one, and again, the shot clock inside 10 as Riley makes the steal. Not a good pass. It's the eighth Panther turnover. It wasn't a good pass, but you've also got to come to the ball, and Morris really sat back and waited. Here's Wilson against Devon. Three-pointer. Going to be too strong. All the way into the hands of Page. Bethel, who was hot in the first half, misses here in the second night. This is the way Pitt likes to play it. Half-court style, run the offense, work some clock. Brown runs it up and in. Jerron Brown has eight. Again, Panthers by three. We've talked about Brown a lot, but under control, he makes big buckets. Braswell tried to answer, and Morris rips down the rebound. Pittsburgh with it. Panthers on a run right now. A good start to the second half. Knight inside. Oh, it keeps up for Pittsburgh as Knight gets his second field goal, and that forces a Hoya timeout. The Panthers have charged, charged down in the second half. An 8-2 run for Pittsburgh to begin the half, and they go up 5-5, 16-11 remaining. Second. The new BMW 3 Series. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. Tire is proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, 
drive on. Hockey fans, the New York Hockey Challenge is on. It's the New York Hockey Challenge presented by TD Waterhouse on MSG Network. Messier and the Rangers, Yachtson and the Islanders, Stevens and the Devils. MSG Network will track all the games between these heated rivals and keep you up to date as all three teams buy for Tri-State bragging rights. Follow your favorite team by logging on to msgnetwork.com. Great up-to-date stats and all the team news. The New York Hockey Challenge presented by TD Waterhouse. And right now the Panthers racing to a five-point lead. Well, they're just more aggressive to start the second half against the Georgetown man. Brown makes a great driving shot here. 6-4, lofts it up with a quick release over the 6-11 Wilson. And then forget about it here. Brandon Knight with that spin around Wilson. The crowd really lit up. And Craig Edrick says, hey, let's talk it over and slow things down here. The Panthers have outscored the Hoyas 25 to 10 over the last six minutes and 45 seconds. And off to a red hot start shooting in the second half, four of seven. Now you want to pick that momentum up. This is a game of momentum swings, and these two teams seem to be able to shift that in their direction during the course of the game. 2-3 by the Panthers. And Braswell out of the lineup right now, and the Hoyas were effective when he was on the bench in the first half. Bethel inside, Wilson spinning on Morris, puts it up, bending off, tipped up, no good. Here comes Sweetney, he misses, and Zavascus has the rebound. Sweetney thought he was fouled. So did his coach, Craig Esri. Well, he might have a cage. Sweetney probably a little frustrated as well. He's been bottled up in there today with just two points. Got to get more involved with the Georgetown offense. He needs touches. And the Panthers will work the clock down. You can almost guarantee that it's going to be 10 or less every time they have the ball. Knight has it tapped away. Long lead pass for Riley Skies and missed the jam out of bounds. It belongs to the Hoyas. That will take us to our first TV timeout with 15-10 remaining to be played. 42-37. Pittsburgh has seesawed back on top. Hungry? You've come to the right place. The home of great brands and great taste. Conagra Foods. We set America's table. Still hungry? Conagra has the foods America craves at meal time, snack time, or any time. Conagra Foods. We set America's table. 535 5555. That's the only number you need to know if you're injured in a car accident, a slip and fall, or been a victim of medical malpractice. 535 5555. At the law offices of Ferrara and Angeloni, our practice is dedicated to protecting your rights. 535 5555. Whether you're in the hospital or at home, we'll come to see you anytime, anywhere. Pick up the phone. Call me now for a free consultation. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 535 5555. Hablamos Espanol. The Big Game on a big screen TV from PC Richard & Son. Get this Mitsubishi 50-inch big screen TV, now $14.99. This Mitsubishi 46-inch 16x9 widescreen HD TV, only $19.95. And pay no interest until January 2003. Next day delivery in time for The Big Game. Big screen savings at PC Richard & Son. We on MSG Network. Half 9 to 2, 15 10 to play in the game. Pittsburgh has the lead. But you know, the way these two teams in the last two have gone back and forth, being in front is not necessarily good. Braswell is back. That's exactly right. Well, Braswell could heat up. He's the veteran, a senior. They need his leadership out there. And, you know, we're in a tight game. Five points doesn't mean much when these two teams play against one another. Here's Bethel. Inside Wilson. They collapse on him. Goes to the baseline, puts up a jumper, bending off, but there's Sweetney, and he's fouled. That time he is fouled. So he'll go to the line and shoot a pair. That's where he spent most of last Saturday, was at the line. Well, I'll tell you, the, the defensive scheme, well, Wilson is getting the ball down low. And Ben Holland said, we're going to try to not allow Sweetney to get many touches. So Sweetney's just saying, hey, I'm going to go get it off the glass. He barreled in there that time like a man on a mission. He had 24 last Saturday, but Rodney, most of them were right there from the charity strike. Well, he was at the line early and often in that one, made 16 free throws. He's got a nice touch from the line, shoots just under 80%. You can see 
The good ball through in rotation. Here's some pressure by Georgetown. And it's Thomas with Braswell in the forecourt. Sweetney picks up Zavascus. And Knight handles the pressure. He'll keep the basketball. Shot clock at 25. Three-point lead. Pittsburgh has it. And the basketball. Zavascus in front of Sweetney, who's not made a foul. He's also only made four points. Morris is alone against Wilson and then misses the jam. Tipped into the corner. Zavaskis will keep it alive. Fresh clock for Pittsburgh. <laughs> well, that was a clinic on the pump fakes. That's a travel or a foul? It's a foul before the shot. Called inside against Georgetown. He will go against Harvey Thomas. That'll be Harvey's second foul. Second team foul. Ontario Lett will come in for Pittsburgh, and Morris goes to the bench. Well, so far, the Panthers getting even as far as the rebounding is concerned, start, thanks to their strong start in the second half. Now, they've been more aggressive, and that, that statistic illustrates that point. They've been driving, rebounding. Georgetown trying to increase their defensive pressure now. Pitt not an easy team to press because they're strong in the backcourt. 2-3 by the Hoyas. You see if Page or Knight, who's been pretty quiet from the perimeter, can heat up here. This is Brown on the perimeter. Here's Page. You saw Bethel jump out on him. Shot clock now winds to 15. Brown in the lane. Reverses. Three. Knight. Good. I mean, how nice is that passing by Pittsburgh? Page could have taken it. Got it back up to Knight. Brown with the setup off the penetration. That's good patience. Biggest lead this afternoon for Pittsburgh. Up six. And Thomas throws it away. That was deflected. So it'll still be Georgetown ball with 23 on the shot clock. Hitting the zone right here. Sweetney around the foul line area now. Trying to step outside to get the ball. That is deflected into the hands of Page. Sweetney fouled him. Didn't matter. Page jams it home. 15 points for Julius Page. The Panthers go up by eight. And the Hoyas call a timeout. It'll be a 30 timeout. John, I think that's a good no call because Page clearly was going to get the advantage. The ball, no call. And it's all pit right now. They are the aggressor to start this second half. There's that long pass. You can't throw that one with this kind of quickness. Good no call there. I mean, Sweetney reaches, but if you do, you take away the basket. Page can really rise. Forget about it. There was the foul, but they let him go, and he jammed it home. And the Panthers on a 14-4 run to start the second half. We said last Saturday it was <laughs> one team would run, the other team would run. Right now it's the Panthers making a run on the Hoyas. You cannot let up. Craig Gestrick right now saying, gentlemen, we've got to get some stops defensively. That's how you get back in games, generate some things. And i got to believe they're going to try to get the ball to Sweeney at the foul line or down low. See Pittsburgh, they've been capitalizing off the turnovers and the points in Georgetown, unable to do the same thing. Braswell will bring it up for Georgetown. 13 minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. The zone's been effective. Really, really clogging things up, as you can see Wilson and Brown with a steal. 14th turnover by Georgetown. Wilson just held on too long. Against the zone, you got to get it. You double team. You got to reverse the ball. Don't hang on too long. Are oh, they going to collapse down on these big guys every time? I think that's exactly right. Until Georgetown hits a couple of jumpers. Left against Wilson. Turns, gets him in the air. No foul. And Howland dancing in front of his bench. Was the Braswell? Was some contact? And we've had contact. When Georgetown and Pittsburgh play, you're going to see contact. Is Sweetney. Quick jumper from the outside. Too strong. Rebound left. It's good defense, Johnny. Make, make Sweetney shoot the 12 footer rather than power it up in the paint area where you know, he's either going to score or get fouled. And this is where Pittsburgh's really tough. Got the lead. They're going to be even more patient with the basketball. Knight for three on the way. Too strong. Kicks high. And we've got a foul on Pittsburgh underneath. It goes on Gerard Brown. It's his first. Team foul on the Panthers. It's 47-39. Pittsburgh on top and Purdue with a win over Iowa at home. So the Boilermakers in the Big Ten getting a victory at home. And Vanderbilt knocked off Georgia. A lot of upsets this Saturday, huh? 
A lot of balance across the country, a lot of quality teams. That's what that tells me. I'll tell you, the NCAA tournament's going to be wild, isn't it? March Madness. We're, all, we're more than a month away, John. It will be mad. <laughs> Inside, almost stolen from Braswell. Gets it back and hits the shot. Seven points for Kevin Braswell. The lead is six for Pittsburgh. Panthers have the ball. Yeah, Braswell's got to get involved along with Sweetney with the offense. Braswell to create. Georgetown needs stops right now to see if they can do what these two teams seem to do against each other is get a run going of their own. Well, they have the last two weeks, I guarantee you. It's been a lot of fun on Saturdays when these two teams get together. Last week at the MCI Center, and this week in Fitzgerald, shot clock inside 10. Final year for this building. Knight off a screen, tried to reverse it, does. Johnson has it, puts up a shot at the buzzer, it's off the mark, and Wilson had the rebound. He's going to be fouled by left. That's the second on left. And we have an official timeout with 11.30 to be played in the game. Pittsburgh still leading. pre-owned BMW. Getting one couldn't be easier. Take one for a test drive today. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Union Architecture Studio, which is composed of architecture students. You're picking out two amazing ideas, Fritz Lang's Metropolis and his reading of the modern movement. The modern movement in architecture was not a style. The modern was against style. It's a, you know, it's a parasite that latches on to the corners of modernist buildings. I have to make money, but the money isn't the first thing. The idea is the first thing. For 80 years, TIA crap has managed money for people with other things to think about. 14 different players, seven on each team have scored. Right now it's Pittsburgh leading by six. Let's take a look at our BMW ultimate drive of the game. And we've had, we've had some good ones today. We really have. And you, and you expect it with Braswell in night playing. This is Brandon Knight, number 20. What a beautiful spin by, Wes, by Wesley Wilson. And he just goes right at it. So quick, John. And you love it when the man goes to the left and finishes. No doubt about it. Javon Troutman has checked in for Pittsburgh. He's on with uh, Zavaskis, Johnson, Knight, and Page. Some changes for Georgetown as Cortland Freeman comes on, along with Wilson, who's played a very strong game today. The freshman, Tony Bethel, of course, Sweetney, and the man with the ball, Kevin Braswell. It impresses me, John, about both of these teams. They've got very good balance with this scoring, and both teams are very unselfish. Look at Pitt, though. They are really clogging the lane right now. They're trying to not allow Sweetney to take this game over. People like Braswell and Bethel will have good opportunities to shoot it. There's something wrong with the shot clock because it shows 30 seconds, and they've had the ball longer than five seconds on this possession. So apparently, the shot clock did not restart. Got to be down to about 20, I would guess. Easy, maybe 15. That was pretty <laughs> patient right there. Longest five seconds in basketball history, huh? What okay. about some other scores? Ronnie this afternoon, college basketball. Kansas has the lead over Texas A&M, playing on the road. Maryland, good basketball team this year, winning in Florida State at home. Gary Williams has them going. What a matchup they had with Duke a week ago, and Oklahoma State, second half up over Colorado State. Just by one right now. Ohio State's been playing well. The team that Pittsburgh beat at Ohio State earlier this year, and right now trailing at Minnesota. The game's still in the first half. And uh, we were both wrong as well. <laughs> well. We probably looked at the game clock and saw how far it reduced down if it didn't go on at all. And this 18 kicks had gone off, John. 
Here we go. Braswell's going to need to create when he gets it. Just 10 seconds now. On the shot clock, 11 minutes to play. Braswell works his way to the top of the circle, puts up a shot that's blocked by Knight. Good defense. Page to Johnson. Zabaskas on the wing. See, Pitt will take the advantage if it's there. Johnson, effective off the bench first half. Nice dish in the first half to travel. That was a beauty over to Zavaskis. Second eight-point lead of the second half for Pittsburgh. The Hoyas had the only double-digit lead up 10 in the first half. Braswell thought about it. Goes baseline. Bethel for three on the way. Bending no good. Tipped up once. Knight had it out of bounds. It'll be Georgetown ball. They are really collapsing right now. Pitt is in the zone, doubling up on Sweetney. The outside shot is there, and the Hoyas will need to knock a couple of those down to free things up for the big fella. Braswell will handle the ball under his own basket. Bethel steps around the three, leans in, and gets it back out to Wilson. Good call. Wilson went up for that rebound with one arm, John. Somebody had the other one. I think it was Zavaskis. It was Zavaskis. That's the second foul on Donatus Zavaskis from Lithuania. By way of Akron, Ohio, for his high school. Wilson. Braswell, three. Right back at him. Troutman tips it to Zavaskis. We've seen the Panthers and the rebound get a hand on the ball and make something happen that turns out to be positive. Page, Johnson, three from deep in the corner, well short. Knight can't go for the steal. Three on two, Bethel. To Braswell, up and under. Scramble for the loose ball. Still loose, and Knight has it. We're going to have a foul. Called on Freeman. We've said two teams that are aggressive, they go for the ball. Good job of officiating there with a lot of players trying to get after that. Leather basketball, check it out. Braswell, great hustle, body's flying. Eventually, gonna have a reach in foul on. Not sure who was on. Freeman. Freeman. Thank you. Cortland Freeman. The Knight had the ball, I saw that. <laughs> All 10 guys were there, so Ronnie, just pick one. Thank you, Pick. <laughs> Pittsburgh will have it. Zavaskis goes back to the bench now. Pressure, man-to-man -man pressure from Georgetown. They make a little run at Brown, and they hand it to Knight. This was effective a week ago in the second half as the tempo and that really picked up. Three on Braswell. Braswell getting hooked up with Knight and commits his third foul. Got a lot of competitors on the floor, and he's riding them right there. Good call. Braswell and Knight, two of the best in the league, two point guards, and they are competing in this one. Knight this time picked up by the freshman Bethel. John, I can tell the way this is going right now. Look for some more reach-ins to be called. The refs will not allow this game to get out of hand and too physical. So if you reach, you're going to get called for it. McCarroll in the lineup. Played briefly in the first half. Brown has been strong again for Pittsburgh with eight points tonight. 49-41, shot clock at 10. You say that every time they get the ball. Don't you? <laughs> Seems that way. Brown off the glass, no good. Troutman the putback. Well, just like he was a week ago, Troutman has been productive off the bench. Panthers have their first double-digit lead. The Hoyas were up 10 in the first half. Pittsburgh leads here. Sweetney, turn around, short, and he'll go to the line. But we've been saying he needs to get the ball, and Sweetney's so strong, he's either going to score or have a good chance to get to the line. Troutman also has been doing a very nice job, as he is right here. There's the reach, but Troutman's been very effective in the middle of the zone, this 2-3 zone. Sweetney will go to the line. Three Hoyas set to check in, and Julius Page also about to return for Pittsburgh. They'll come in after that first made free throw. Once again for Georgetown, Amari Faulkner checking in. Along with Brooklyn Freeman. And Paul. So those are the three that come in. And Page is back for the Panthers. Sweetney's just terrific at the line. That will serve him well at the next level. He's got a nice touch, John. He's strong. He's just been bottled up. Ben Howell's doing a nice job there. And Craig Gesher trying to get his team now to extend. 
see if they can get something off the defensive pressure to pick the pace of this game up. The Panthers take a quick timeout, and they're going to take a full timeout with 8.41 remaining. 51-43, Pittsburgh's lead was 10. It is now 8. No, they've changed it. It's a 30-second timeout. So what has been Howland telling his team? The Panthers have done pretty much what they wanted to here in the second half but they've got to make sure they don't let it get away. Let's take a look as they huddle up at our standings in the West. He's saying keep doing what you're doing out there, gentlemen. Good quality shots. Be patient. You see those the standings in the West Division. Syracuse and Pitt battling Georgetown. Really like to get this game to tighten things up at the top. Pitt, of course, just beat Syracuse to hand in their first league loss. Notre Dame, Seton Hall, Rutgers, and West Virginia looking for that first W. Connecticut, only undefeated team right now, and they head up the East Division. You know, there were a lot of people in Connecticut land hanging their heads after St. Bonaventure beat them in Hartford. Well, St. Bonaventure played a terrific game that night, and look what the Huskies have done since then. Now they shot the lights out in Jimmy Calhoun's team building up more and more confidence just as Pitt is. And as we've said, a lot of balance in this league where game in, game out, seems like anyone can win. You want to try to hold home court advantage if possible. Brown turns, puts it up. Followed by Trotman, no good, but a foul call. It'll go against the Hoyas and it'll go against Portland Freeman. That'll be his second. Troutman around the basketball again. He's so active on the offensive glass. Hoyas have got to try to put a body on him, but he established good position before Brown. He he sensed the shot, and that's what a good offensive rebounder does. He anticipates, gets position, and he was in the right place. But the Panthers only one for six at the free throw line this afternoon. And Troutman has made both that the Panthers have. But you can see Troutman getting into the flow of this game. He's getting some minutes, and he's making the most of them. Sweetney sits. He hasn't done that very often, but Wilson checks in for him as Braswell is back in, and Bethel has gone to the bench. Knight being administered to down at the end of the Pittsburgh bench on that right calf by Tony Salisi. And Tony acting almost like it's a cramp as he gets on him. He's bending the toe inward toward the leg, and I wonder if that did cramp up on him, John. He's been bothering him. Steal by Brown. Panthers have a three on two. Here's Johnson. They almost let it get away. Scramble for it. Pittsburgh keeps it alive. Page turns. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. They didn't have a break very well, but they survived it. They did, and with Georgetown really swarms after the ball. Looks like a running back, thinks he has a hole, and it closes up. Brown weaving his way inside, using that strong body to force the foul by Drew Hall. That's three on Drew. Timeout, 7.50 to go. Panthers and Ben Holland by 10. At Advanced Auto Parts, we believe in doing it yourself. So we made this commercial ourselves. We had Florence here check out the prices of our competitors versus ours. Do you have the results? But first, Lawrence, would you ever lie to millions of Americans who really want to believe that someone on TV is capable of telling the truth? Never. Go. Advance is still the queen of low prices. Queen, Florence? As long as I'm here. Queen's fine. Hey, Ranger fans, if you love your Broadway blue shirts, you've got to catch MSG's exclusive pregame show, Geico Rangers Game Night. Get team news, interviews, and game analysis from the best in the business. In-depth features and stories on your favorite Ranger players, plus stats, matchups, and all those great action highlights. You know, hits are a part and parcel. They really like to playing hockey, and uh, uh, it's, it's part of the game, and you look forward to it. Before they drop the puck, get the inside scoop on Geico Rangers Game Night, a half hour before Ranger games, only on MSG Network. Between Boston and New York, thousands of bioscience and IT companies are creating one of the fastest growing technology hotspots in the country. It's Connecticut, ranked number one in knowledge-based jobs, number three in readiness for the knowledge-based economy, and with a quality of life that is second to none. Check us out. You belong in Connecticut. Pittsburgh has matched its biggest lead of the afternoon. We're inside eight minutes to play, and let's take a look at our best play of the game, brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. 
Well, we've had some good action in this game, and you can see Brandon Knight hands up, makes the passing lane difficult. Page with the pickoff, no call on Sweetney, and then up, jamming it. Reminds me of you in the old days, John, the way they say you could rise. But Page has got that great, you know, vertical leap. Seems like every game, Johnny, gives you one of those, and that was a beauty right there with the finish. One of our best plays of the game. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. This game produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. Brandon Knight back on the court after being worked on by trainer Tony Salisi. Point-wise, Brandon has just seven so far this afternoon. But Page again picking up the slack, looking for a three-pointer. Knight keeps it alive on the weak side as he got around Braswell and got the offensive rebound. One of the reasons why... Pitt is the number two rebounding margin team in the conference. Everybody gets into the act, including the backcourt people. Troutman almost dribbled that one off his knee, has to hand it back to Knight. Shot clock at 16, so still time for the Panthers. They won't make anything happen until they're 10, right? That's right. Your best rebounding team are team rebounding teams. Everybody getting involved. On the weak side, it's Braswell tracking it down. He had Faulkner in front. He wanted it. Instead, it goes to Bethel. Nice help off by Braswell. He's got to be a little bit more offensive-minded down the stretch in this one. The Hoyas need his penetrating and shooting. Braswell's three rims out. The rebound went to Mark McCarroll. And the Panthers going nine deep as they normally do. Panthers working clock very well. Once the Panthers get ahead of you, which they're up now by 10, they tend to increase their patience with the ball. Work the clock. Knight it goes inside. Troutman. Back to Knight. He'll go to the line. We'll give and go. And Portland Freeman is going to pick up his third foul. Here's the give and go. Down the give to Troutman. And the go by Knight. Give it right back to him. Nice job. Nice passing. I see Knight's numbers, John, the seven and the six right there, and he's playing with that sore right cap. He's only practiced once since the Miami game well over a week ago, which was yesterday, so trying to get that thing loosened up, and other people have stepped up nicely while this has been going on. Well, certainly one of them has been paid. In the meantime, the Hoyas, who were so hot shooting in the first half, just disappeared. They haven't made a field goal in almost six minutes. And Pittsburgh has run it out to a double-digit lead. Seen a lot of zone in the second half. They haven't been able to get many breaks going. They need to make some shots from the perimeter. Knight with nine. Panther lead grows to a dozen. Biggest lead for either team now. There's the difference shooting-wise. Wow. And a dramatic turnaround in the second half. Then this zone. Riley along the baseline is fouled. We haven't seen much of that. Georgetown trying to penetrate. That's an excellent move by Riley right there. The shot's not going. Get it to the bucket. Either see if he can get it to go or go to the line. Third foul on Morris, the first Panther player with three fouls, and Riley will shoot a pair. He's a terrific foul shooter, just under 90%. And you can see why. Just the third point this afternoon for the sophomore from Georgia. And he didn't jinx him there, which was nice, John. You talk a lot of times with those accolades and they have trouble finding the twine, but not Riley on those two. Not the Hoyas, they haven't missed. They made all eight of their free throws. Panthers have struggled in that category, although they've been to the line more often. Knight bumping with Bethel. Remember, all of these guys for Pittsburgh come back next year with the exception of Chad Johnson. Knight gets in the lane, goes back to Brown. This is a typical Panther set. Spread offense. Balanced floor, two men on each side, a little high screening, and Knight at the controls. Shot clock is inside 10 again. Knight, Zavaskas, passes on the three, goes low to Brown, works his way in against Wilson, puts it up and in. Double figures for Jerron Brown, that's 10. That is just the clinic offensively. Patience, ball movement, penetration, and then a great finish by Brown. The Hoyas right now. They've got to find the offense. Almost seven minutes since Georgetown did that, made a field goal. Big basket by the freshman, Bethel. It is his fourth three-pointer, and Bethel with 16. Just one away from his freshman high, and the bump foul call. You said, Ronnie, we'd see more of that. It goes against Riley. The Panthers are going to have to make some free throws sooner or later in this game. That's right, and, and that's where you have to put games away, and Georgetown with Craig Eschrick right now saying, hey, 
five to go. We've got to apply pressure, take some chances, and that's where you will commit some personal fouls. Jerron Brown, this is a one and one. And it's one of these games, Ronnie, that the Panthers could very easily in the last five minutes win right at the foul line if they make their shot. That's right. Well, because they're patient with the ball, John. Georgetown will have to do some gambling, reaching if they can't make steals, and that's where you have to make your free throws to put it away. Well, the Panthers have been able to do that now. They've made their last six in a row at the line. And Brown with two big ones. The lead goes back to double figures at 11. Bethel has had the answer offensively much of the afternoon for Georgetown. Will it be enough? Sweeney continues to be doubled up down low. Other people have to step up. Three is short. Rebound Page just ripped it out of the grasp of Sweetney that time. Now Brown, see if they back it out. Here's the patience of Cam Brown. You know, he, he doesn't force anything. He's a sophomore. That's maturity and patience. The clock, the biggest ally for Pitt. But Four and a half to go. Can't lose your aggressiveness either, John. There's still a lot of time left in this one. Knight bump, dumps it down. Morris against Wilson is hammered. That's the second on Wesley Wilson. Let's update the rebounding stat. Remember, we told you at the top of the game that the Panthers have been dominating, especially in their last couple of ball games. But at halftime, the Georgetown Hoyas had the lead, and they still do by one. The so Georgetown with that advantage, but Pitt has shot the ball so much better in this second half. The big thing for Georgetown is they've just gone so cold against the 2-3 zone in this second half. Morris has not scored. He'll have two chances, and he misses number one. So he's 0 for 3 at the line. Morris has come up with some rebounds, though, and he, he is a big presence defensively for Pitt. And I, think, I think they're just looking for him to get that 8 to 10-point kind of night with some consistency and grab some boards. One out of two, and the Panthers will take what they can get. It's his first point, back to a 12-point lead with 4.20 to go. Fitzgerald field out, sold out. Third game in a row. What a week it would be for Pittsburgh if they could win this one. Win at Georgetown, beat Syracuse here, and come back and beat Georgetown again. But it's not in the book yet. How about the effort by Brown? How about the effort wow. by Brown? Just went and got it in traffic. That's Sharon Brown, and that's why he leads the Panthers in rebounding. That is amazing. Knight bumped from behind, hands it off to Morris, and it's tapped out of bounds. Pittsburgh ball, 18 seconds. That's the time on the shot clock. Panthers' lead is 12. Federal law requires all advertisers to provide reasonable support for advertising claims before they are made. reasonable enough? BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Drive one at your local BMW center. He killed my father, he killed my brother, and both my sisters. Pancreatic cancer killed them all. We don't know how or why they got it, but we knew it, and it was already too late. There still isn't any way to detect it early or to treat it effectively, but we do know the cure research. Just look how far we've come with other diseases. Knicks fans and bowling aficionados, come join the team for Knicks Bowl 3, presented by MetLife on February 18th at Chelsea Piers. Test your bowling skills against the entire Knicks team while joining the coaching staff and a host of celebrities. All money raised at this exciting event will benefit the Red Holtzman Knicks Cheering for Children Foundation. For more information or to purchase tickets, call the Knicks toll-free fan line at 877-NYK-DUNK. This basketball game is brought to you by BMW. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. And by Cooper Tires. A lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires, drive on. 
downtown Pittsburgh. It is 60 to 48. Here's the reset. Georgetown has one full, 130. Panthers have two 30s and a full. Panthers will be shooting two the rest of the game, and the Hoya is about to go into the one and one. Look for a lot of pressure from Georgetown. They need scores, but most importantly, they need a couple of stops. They've got to hope that Pitt will miss some free throw opportunities man to man by the Hoyas. And the shot clock winding down again to 10. There's the dump down, but left could not handle it, taps it out of bounds. So that's the 10th turnover by Pittsburgh. It's good penetration. Craig Eschrick with the fist play. Ben Howland counters with the defense. Been 2 3 the second half. Just collapsing on Sweeney, who's now trying to step outside to the top of the key. Riley. Inside Sweetney, and Brown will be charged with a foul. Jerron Brown got all arm that time as he reached in, so they're going to put a good free throw shooter at the line. Sweetney is four for four. But he has only six points in the game. He's made only one field goal. For that. Well, that's right, because the defense has been collapsed all over him. You can see Pitt with the advantage in the paint. Sweetney has been doubled up this whole second half, and clearly the game plan, he had 16 free throws in the last game. This is that big front end. Held ball. Possession arrow will keep it at this end. And Riley and Knight go nose to nose. Kind of expected that in this kind of game. Well, it's been aggressive. Good job of officiating Tom Lopes right in there. A lot of physical contact, of course. Riley was on the court. Knight got on top of him, tied him up. And Knight now joined with Bethel. There's a little rivalry developing here. A lot of intensity on the court. Players want this one. Didn't get the timeout call. Brown asked for it, but the ball was already in play. Brown's got that presence. He saw Ben Howland over there calling for it. Inside left, taps it away. Sweetney, Knight intercepts and keeps it alive as left comes out of there with it. How did he get that? I don't know. That's going to go against Knight, an offensive foul. And that'll get the place going. Brandon Knight picks up his second. And Pittsburgh is going to call a timeout. Knight will discuss it with John Cowell, but the offensive foul. And watch this play underneath the basket. Sweetney tries to dish it. Knight, what a play there by Let to catch it and Knight to save it. I thought he was trying to throw it off of Hoya. He was, I think. And that foul was called on Knight. Yeah, they were bumping. It could have gone either way, but the left arm did flail up. Bethel with some body. It was almost to take your pick, but I think right now, what the officials trying to do say, hey, we're going to get this thing under control. We're going to call it close down the stretch. Reach in will be called. Georgetown, just, they, they just haven't shot it in the second half. No. They need to make some shots, put pressure on, then take care of the ball and make your free throws. Well, you knew they probably weren't going to shoot 58% for the entire afternoon, but you didn't expect it to go away so drastically in the second half. It has, though, and that's why the Panthers have the lead. Kansas now opening it up over Texas A&M on the road in the Big 12. Here the lead is 12. Maryland pounding Florida State. Now the game's in the second half as well. About 25 scores from around the country. And Oklahoma State has widened its lead a bit at home in Stillwater. And Minnesota hanging on against Ohio State. The Buckeyes have worked themselves into the top 25, which the Panthers have done again. Second time this year Pittsburgh has been in the top 25. Three-pointer Braswell. Zavaskis has the rebound. Is out of bounds. Georgetown ball. Well, you know what, John? If he wasn't out of bounds, it looked to me like he walked. He was covering some ground there trying to hold his balance. 2.43 to go. Panthers trying to protect a 12-point lead. Foul is on Zavaskis, and John Cowell's not winning any friends here. I'll say, John, one of your veteran officials, though, one of your top officials, not only in the Big East, but in the country, he'll make the call as he sees it, obviously, regardless of public opinion. Well, we talked to him a little bit at halftime about that call where they looked at the monitor, and he said it was to determine who the shooter was. Right. They knew that it wasn't paid. They just wanted to make sure they had the right guy, and they did. So it'll be Braswell at the line. 
the reaction on that one, it looked like Zavoskis fell, contact, then he fell, and it seemed like a late whistle. That's what the crowd reacted to, but there was contact. Now Braswell is a terrific free throw shooter and a lot of jawing between the two sides now, so the officials have to keep the lid on this one. Absolutely, and they will. This will be called tightly, last two and a half. Braswell, good free throw shooter, has nine points in the game. Pittsburgh has the ball and the lead. They'll run at anybody who has the ball. Brown pushes it ahead to Page, who just does stay in bounds. Wow, took a look, didn't he? <laughs> yes, he did. Let me see, am I touching that sideline? Knight knocked away from behind. The Hoyas get the steal, and now Knight commits the foul. So it's Georgetown falling back in this game with the clock stopped. Well, that, this is exactly what Georgetown wants to create right now, down 10, to try to get back in, try to create some chaos, full court pressure, and not allow Pitt to bring the ball down and just run their offense, and that's what happened on the last couple of exchanges. Bethel has 17 points, so he has matched his freshman high. Looking for a career high. Ontario Lett, good job off the bench. Siobhan Troutman coming off the bench does have a career high today. It's only nine, but it's a career high. And he misses number two into the hands of Brown. That's big because on the make, it allows Georgetown to set the pressure up, which they're doing here. They're looking to trap. And they fire. That'll be number three on Bethel. But the Panthers are going to have to make their free throws, Ronnie. That's something they haven't really done this year. Both teams in the double bonus. John, when the rule went to that on the 10th team foul that the opposition would get two free throws, we used to see this all the time, a lot of reaching at the end, and this at least takes the edge off of the importance of the first free throw, although I think if he has Ben Holland, he'd like to get it. Got the roll. Knight has been successful on all three so far this afternoon. He's in double figures again. Averaging almost 15 a game. He's got 10 this afternoon. Panthers by 10. And this is an area where Brandon Knight, as he misses number two, is just below 50%. Needs to come up with them, and Georgetown needs quick answers. Braswell's three, too strong. And he pushed off. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the fans <laughs> who let us know that Riley did push off, but John Cowell saw it as well. So we'll go all the way to the other end. Not for the timid out here, is it? This is intense. Oh. You know, they call it here in uh, Pittsburgh, right? John Friendly Fitzgerald, and I'm not sure that the opposition feels that way when they come in. It's tight, crowds into it, and they're sensing they've got something special going with this Pitt team this year. It would be a first if it happened. First time that Pittsburgh has ever swept the season series from Georgetown. Zavoskis is a good foul shooter. He's got nine points on the afternoon. John, you can see the confidence building with Pitt. They got off to a great start this year, beat St. John's in their first Big East game here by a lot, by 24, I think it was. Beat BC on the road. They beat Georgetown and Syracuse. You're sensing the confidence. Well, they lost at home to Notre Dame, a game they felt they should have won. Thrown into the hands of Brown. Goes behind his back. Oh, what presence wow. by Brown, huh? Yeah, he just, he's so smooth. He knows what he's doing out there. And the Oscars with it, shot clock. So the game clock now inside two minutes left and the fans beginning to anticipate as Knight steps through. Back to Page. Still time on the shot clock. Work the clock. Foul is on Braswell. That's number four. And that's a foul to Georgetown. You make sooner yeah. rather than let 20 seconds go off. Look at Ben Holland saying, good thinking out there, gentlemen. Well, the Pittsburgh Panthers in the last two seasons you see their numbers. They've only lost one when the opponent scores under 60. And they're trying to make it 14 of 20 opponents this year scoring less than 60 points. You remember the Hoyas had 35 at halftime. Well, a couple of things, John. Pitt is controlling the tempo. They're controlling the boards. They seem to win the battle of the boards every game out. They're very patient with the ball. And they play good defense, so the scores tend to be down, and they're executing very well. Let's look ahead, because the Big East race is really just beginning to heat up. Georgetown was the favorite in the West. They're going to have to battle back. They've got Syracuse coming up on the 28th, West Virginia on the 2nd, then Notre Dame, a nice homestand coming up for the Hoyas before they go to Seton Hall and Villanova. 
some tough matchups, but they'll be happy to return to the MCI Center and get a couple of those games, although the first one, Syracuse, a tough one. And maybe some revenge in mind for the Panthers as next Thursday they'll be at Notre Dame, come back here for Villanova, then at Syracuse, at West Virginia, Rutgers at home, a team they've already beaten on the road. They've got two games left with West Virginia. They've already beaten Syracuse this year. Ben Howland's club right now looking for its 18th win against only three losses and sixth win in the conference. Page misses number two. Julius with another big game, though, 16 points. Three-pointer. Riley on the weak side with a putback. So Riley gets the basket. So Hoyas takes the timeout. It's a 30. Georgetown will be down to just one full timeout remaining. The Panthers now have one full and one 30. And we have 122 to go. It's Pittsburgh by 11. It's the kind of thing that we're seeing from Pittsburgh, especially after they lost in overtime on the road to Miami. And they came back strong with that huge win at Georgetown. That came last week, Ronnie. You were there. They gutted it out. Both teams kept running at each other. Here in the second half of this game, it was the Panthers who came out early in the second half, made a run, and it made the lead stand up. It was a good example of a team that comes out of the locker room and captures the momentum. And Pitt did it. They went into that zone, John. They bottled up Sweet News. Had a tough afternoon getting the ball, getting shots. That was the game plan. And then it's been controlling tempo and controlling the clock. Long pass to left. He's got very solid hands. And he's fouled. You don't mind putting him at the line. He does. He's got big hands, Johnny. He's long. He's got long arms. Good catch. He's also been patient with the ball a couple of times late here. And Ben Holland has liked it. He hasn't four shots up. Let will go to the line. One eleven to play. First points of the second half for Let. And look at Georgetown, Ronnie, in the second half. Four for twenty-four. That's been the zone. The perimeter shot that went down in the first half didn't. Good example of. A mixture of inside out that you want. And again, the the paint really clogged up with that zone. And the defense stayed in it the more that Georgetown did hit let. Nice job from the line and good contributions from a number of people off that pit bench today. Miss of a three. Sweetney fighting for the rebound. Hoyas keep it alive. Braswell's three on the way. No good. Tracked down again by Georgetown, but thrown tonight. And that'll do it. Braswell's gonna foul out. Well, Braswell struggled shooting it today, John, and Sweetney was bottled up. And when that happens, you've got nine for Braswell, six for Sweetney, 15 between them. That's an excellent defensive job by Pittsburgh. Well, you look at that. Sweetney had 16 at the foul line alone in last Saturday's game. So quite a turnaround. The Panthers came in knowing they'd have to do the job inside, and they've done it. Give them credit. And it's interesting the way the coaches make adjustments. I've seen Pitt play quite a bit, and you have two, John. They went into the zone because it was effective, and they stayed with it. Craig Eschrick, on the other hand, has tried some different things and some pressure, but Pitt from in front is a difficult team to pressure with their guard strength. Wilson will come back in and replace Sweetney. Knight back to the line where he's missed his last two after hitting three in a row. The biggest lead of the afternoon in the final minute for Pittsburgh it stays at 13 as Knight has missed his last three chances. Bethel, how about a long three? Wow, Bethel has had a career day. That's 20 points for him. And five three-pointers for Bethel. Makes it a 10-point ball game. The future is bright with Bethel. He's a good-looking young player. He can stroke it. Savaskis is fouled. We'll walk to the other end with 44 seconds to play. Maryland has defeated Florida State. And Oklahoma State still leading, but just by six in Stillwater. Ohio State bouncing back finally against Minnesota to take the lead by three. So the Buckeyes trying to pull one out on the road. Savaskis, three for three at the line, 11 points for him. That's just about what he's averaging per game. Jerron Brown, another big performance, 12 points here this afternoon. Julius Page, well, he got 18 last Saturday against Georgetown. And he hit 21 against Syracuse. And uh, so far this afternoon, 16 points. 
It's great balance, John. Knight has the rebound. The Panthers are going to win this one. Yeah, they've done it with, with the zone. Georgetown just went cold in the second half. Inside game got taken away, and again, patience, balance, and teamwork has done it again for the Panthers. And Craig Estrey trying to back his team off, so that's enough. And good. the way this game has been played, that's a pretty good gesture, don't you think? Yeah, it really is. I mean, Craig Gessler, classy, he's down there, said, hey, Ben Holland, your team's done a great job here today. There's no sense shooting yep. any more foul shots. It's about a one-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. That's going to do it. Pittsburgh gets the win for the first time in their history in the Big East. They have defeated the Hoyas twice, 67 to 56, an 11-point win. A hard-fought battle between two very aggressive, very physical teams, and the Panthers roll on. They are now 18 and three. They go to six and two in conference play. The Georgetown Hoyas were picked to win the West. It's going to be tougher for them now, Ronnie. They've got some work to do. Yeah, they really do. They can get on a roll. I think everyone's going to beat each other up in the conference this year. There's just so much balance. Tough to win on the road. Pitt's on a great roll right now. They're playing with a high level of confidence. So right now, they're the surprise team to be in this whole league. Well, Brandon Knight may be limping a little bit, but he did the job this afternoon. Good note for Georgetown. Tony Bethel had a career-high game as he scored 20, but the Panthers get the win 67-56. For Ron Perry and our entire crew here in Pittsburgh, thanks for joining us. The Panthers roll on in Big East basketball.